Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel uh, and another episode on the Abarth 500 SS. Um, I've been running this car now for a few weeks. The ride is ridiculously harsh in it um, and there's also a slight vibration. So what I thought I'd do, I'm just going to run through kind of like my snag list today and kind of button up a couple of bits and pieces. You've just seen at the entrance of the video, uh, the driver's front tire uh, seems to have a slow puncture it seems to go down overnight and there is also like i said the slight vibration so i think um that tire needs to be replaced so we've already done the two rears we'll do the two fronts as well um probably won't get that done in this episode um because i'm waiting for the same brand of tire um and same make of tire to come back in stock at the tire fitters because i want them all to match um but yeah we're going to get george in on this one he's going to give us some help um some help sorry with uh, getting some of the snag list done so let's crack on and see how we get on. Right, do you know what we're doing today, George? Yeah. What? I don't know. Right, okay, so you don't know what we're doing. Right, we have to fix a couple of things on the car. Yeah. Right, so one thing that annoys me is when you've got the DAB radio on, yeah. it gets um, signal for a short period of time and then drops out. And I think that's because somebody has ripped the antenna off the windscreen whether they thought that was a security device when they stole it or something i don't know but we have down here yeah yeah i'm getting it george yeah. right, you can hold that yeah. that's our new antenna so we can listen to the radio yeah. okay so we need to take this cover off yeah. take out the stereo yeah. and then run the wire somehow from there yeah. to there yeah you reckon you can handle that yeah. okay mate cool Let's get started on that one then. Yep. Yeah, so I think George got a bit bored. He's got a birthday party to go to shortly, so he's quite excited. So, um, yeah, annoyingly, the kit I bought, I did look online, it was supposed to be the right one. All the aerial connectors are incorrect. So that's the one that we actually need. So it's got like, um, so it's almost like a, a female connector on that end. And then all the ones that are on the connector I've bought, I don't know if you can see that, they've got kind of like a, a wadding in there so it's it's just too it's just too big they won't fit on so that's quite frustrating but at least we now know what connector needs to go on there so i'm going to put all this back together quickly um and then i think to get this cable out from over here um we're gonna have to do some clever routing and maybe even take off uh the compartment underneath the dash there just so we've got some more access but my ideal will be that I'll use when I get the right aerial connector. I'll put some tape on this and we'll use this to pull through from the other side. There you go, you see like that and get that into place. Right, so <clears throat> trying to pull the cable through didn't work. And the reason why it's because it's rooted over here. You can see that? So that's the microphone cable, which has got some random moments where it's cable tied on something else. And I was trying to pull our new antenna cable through, and that just wasn't going to happen because it's cable tied on. So, as there's an airbag above here, I didn't want to just keep yanking the cable through and hoping for the best so there was a, a fair few bolts in that glove box that needed to come out so let's get these cables off and then I need wire cutters get that And then it's 
for me that came and died. Um, that came and died. That's our old cable. <coughs> Love that in the bin, and now we can run our new cable, which is here. Put that down through there, and then we want to go up here. There we go. So that's now routed round through underneath there. Roots round up and it comes out here. So what I need to do now is pull the excess through, clean the glass where I'm going to stick the sensor and then pull the excess through, tidy all the excess up under here and then cable tie it all up so it's nice and neat and tidy and then we can hook that back up. working where are you going today George preschool. to preschool where's the car going today car. where's this car going today car park. well yeah it, you're right yeah it, it has gone to a car park it's gonna go and have the wheels all repainted make them all nice and tidy yeah, yeah? it'll be exciting yeah. why do you like this car George you like the engine the sound of the engine yeah, yeah? and what did mummy tell you this morning what did you just tell me on the way here yeah. what did what did you say about red lights Mummy said we can go through red lights. Well, we can't, mate, because red lights are only there to stop the cars. The only people that can go through that is emergency cars, isn't it? Yes. And what sort of emergency cars are there? Ambulances, fire engines, and police cars. Yeah. Police cars, yeah. yeah. Okay, mate, right, well, shall we go to get to preschool then? Yeah. Okay, mate, let's go.
several days later. Okay, so we're now moving on to the passenger seat. So as I mentioned before, <clears throat> we've got this um, seam here where the zip has basically torn loose. And I don't know if you can see, but actually that's made a hole <clears throat> uh, just there in the seam. So what I've bought, along with a couple of other little bits, so let's have a look. So we've got some leather colour balm to restore the colour of the leather seats. And we have a little hot air gun. I'm going to give this a go. A lot of good reviews on Amazon for it. So if it turns out to be good, I'll ping a link in the description. You can, I have got one of the big heat guns, but it's a bit awkward. Uh, and this seems a little bit more accurate. So that'll be quite handy, especially when doing things like um, the shrink wrap on electrical wires. Um, and then finally, I've bought this. This is self-adhesive nylon. And so my thought was to cut a section off this and then undo the zip all the way up and then stick a piece of nylon all the way down the back just to reinforce this bit of leather here so that that's now strong again and then we can get me with my excellent sewing skills uh, not um, to basically try and stitch that back in to tidy that up because I think that's the only thing that's kind of letting this seat down <clears throat> and then when we've done that we'll get the leather kit we'll do a little test patch on the edge of that seat there just where it's come discolored just to make sure the color match is right and then we'll go ahead and do a full leather treatment I'm probably going to avoid getting too close to those center stripes um, just because I don't want them to turn red um, and then on this seat I think we're just going to attend to this bolster here and just see and again a little bit of cracking here and a need a bit of treatment when those two have gone on I've then got a uh, leather balm <clears throat> well like a ceramic really which will then seal all the leather to protect it from any kind of weathering in the future so let's do this bit first and see how we get on you normally have at the bottom here I don't know if you can see that is this plastic bar here <clears throat> it's basically just hooked around the bottom of the seat so I'm trying to position the camera so you can see and it's not on a tripod so there we go so we're just gonna pull that down normally to get it off Oh, so you can see that there, you've got like a hook and a little clasp there, just hooks underneath there into that plastic line. And let's see if we can get to the other zip. There we go. Okay, so now we can get to this bit of the leather. So, like I said, going to, why is that still hooked? Ah, hooks there as well, look. So, let's see if I can get that off. He's got a little hook holding it in place. Much better. Right. <clears throat> so let's cut a strip off this. I'll go slightly, slightly higher. So up to about there, I think. Yeah, 
so that will sit basically behind there and just give that a bit more support where it's currently splitting. It doesn't have to be the prettiest of things, but just to give it some backing. And come on, just double layer that slightly, just where the stitching's the worst. So now we should be in a position where we can get that bit of plastic back there and actually stitch that zip back into place, I'll tidy that up and it should look like that. So I'm going to go and grab uh, uh, the wife's sewing kit and see if we can't sort that out. I'll be back in a minute, we'll see how we get on with that. Okay, so I think that first attempt wasn't too bad. So I ended up taking those two more of those little rings there and there and just lifted this up so I've got more access to do the uh, the stitching on it. Started up here, which was probably the, the best way to start it to keep it tight to the leather. But this little tear here is still visible. So what I'm going to do is go, just go over again quickly. Ignore the loose bits of thread. I don't know how to sew but I think for a first attempt, that's not too bad. Um, so yeah, so I'm just gonna loop that over there, just try and stitch it a bit tighter and then maybe just get like some black, um, like a black Sharpie or something just to kind of make that less visible. And then I think that'll go back in there. But yeah, considering that was all torn out, it seems quite solid. So I'm just gonna double stitch, I think is what you say, restitch another layer just up to there and then we'll go from there. But yeah, the wife's uh, sewing kit worked a treat. It's not the best of jobs, but I've double, well, I stitched all the way down, then went all the way back up to kind of like double it up. It's not as perfect as factory, but considering that was torn out, and well, that's cost me like nothing, because I already had, well, I say it's cost me nothing. It was three quid for this roll. <coughs> of the nylon tape and I've still got loads of it left so if I need to use it again I can. Um, so yeah, so what I might do is just see if I've got a little bit of black, I'm sure I've got some black um, dye somewhere, I might just try and dye that edge there just to tidy it up but I need to clean the back of the seat as well. But yeah, that's that job out of the way. So I'm just waiting on some applicators for the red leather colouring. Um, so while we're waiting for that, let's... Uh, we can probably coat the door handles with the ceramic because I've already got that ready to go. So let's do that now. I'll go and grab a cloth. We'll do the doors and then we'll wait for the applicator to turn up. Should be here today. It's uh, 12 o'clock now. I'm sure it was on a pre one o'clock delivery. Um, and then the other thing you need to do, which I haven't done yet, is change that um, door handle, door handle, wing mirror covering uh, because it's all, um, 
pitted and uh, lacquers peeled off the top of it and I've actually got another one of those from one of the subscribers so we'll get on to those two bits now yeah, we, we, this is, we're gonna give this a go which is um, Gion leather coat I've used this in the past it's a really good quality product doesn't change the appearance of the leather but it does protect it really well so I'm going to do this side of the seat so you can see the difference give it a generous coating I have quickly hoovered the seat but to be fair the handheld I was using was a bit rubbish and then you just gently work it in if we just do this area here you see it just darkens it down now don't worry it won't leave a, a shiny finish like some of the silicon based products will um, and what you do is you just leave it on there let it dry for I think it says 10 hours is advertised and then uh, yeah just make sure you evenly coat everything that's the trick on this just to get it done evenly and I'll do the centre bit as well and you don't have to put loads on just enough so that the leather is fed by it there you go it starts to dry off already so we'll let that dry and then we'll come back and we'll see what the difference is between the two I don't think you'll see much difference but we know then it's protected and that's the most important thing hard as well work it in get to all the edges you don't have to buff this off, you just need to give it a good coat and let it dry. And as I've used this stuff in the past, it makes the leather feel really soft. So, no stickiness, no silicones, no nothing like that. So yeah, we'll let that dry and see what the final result is like. So I've taken the mirror off, best way to do it without breaking it push the mirror out so it's at this angle and then get like a long trim tool in and just kind of lever it it'll just pop undo the two connectors and then we've got one two three four clips i believe yeah that are holding that mirror cover in place so i'm just going to pry those off and then we'll get this covering off as well okay so that's the old cover removed our new one there was one little clip at the bottom there but actually doesn't hook into anything but that was quite difficult to get off so in the end I put pressure onto that clip and that clip um, and then I got a trim tool just under here and that allowed me to pull it away so reinstall is pretty much straightforward just line up all the tabs make sure the clips come through click and there we've got one little tab which is broken but that ain't going anywhere that's solid look and there we go from replacement wing mirror cover much tidier right put the glass back in now and then we'll move on to the next bit I forgot to video this bit but I also fixed this bit of trim so if you remember before it was forward so it was just a tiny little bend in the wheel arch there so I just got a, a rubber um, mallet on there and then just very gently tapped it in just to straighten that edge and this I thought was actually where the paint's come off but it's not as you see some of it I remember this tire was completely exploded out when we got the car so I think it's smacked into that distorted it and then left a load of rubber residue um, I still need to address a couple of these little bits these light marks here but again that's just a case of going over with the buffer um, yeah oh yeah I'm still trying to figure out why the boot release button doesn't work right so trying to figure out why this boot isn't working I pulled back the rubber grommet here because these cables are liable to um, basically come in brittle and cracking in here you can actually buy a repair kit where you basically cut this boot out put a new one in and it's got all new wires when I took it apart I found these wire here and they were connected sorry if the wind noise is bad um, they were connected with one of these this end one of those that end so I've taken that off I've checked the discontinuity between there and there so I can 
reckon we're going to do a repair on this now because obviously somebody's been in here before. I don't think this is the issue, but this needs to be addressed. So I bought some solder sticks and we'll get the heat gun out in a second and I'll show you how these work, but these work really well. Basically got a small bowl of, uh, bowl of solder inside. You heat them up, the solder melts and joins the two wires together so they're nice and solid. So we'll find the right size one of these and get them on there and then we'll get the heat gun out stick repair, sorry that solar stick repair seemed to be pretty much pointless, I mean look how strong it is, but as soon as I pulled it down, well, look at all these, there's multiple wires broken in there, so I've just literally ordered one of these off Amazon, uh, loom repair kit, it's actually cheaper than eBay, uh, £24.06, and so that'll be here tomorrow before one o'clock, um, and yeah we'll get that fitted, but so that I can check out the wires that are all broken, I'm going to get a knife to cut down this boot now because the new kit has a replacement boot but you need access to all the wires at either end and if you look at even that one there so I just want to make sure this is safe overnight when we cut that off any of these wires that have got splits in it I'm going to put a bit of tape around just to keep protected because the last thing you want is these joining where they shouldn't join um, and starting a fire which would be pretty nasty but yeah good job we found that Cut away. I've left the grommet in here. I've not taken the complete thing off in case it rains and I don't want any water getting inside the car. So, um, yeah. So you've got your main earth wire there. That's exposed. This brown wire here, I've traced it back. And I think so it goes to the rear heater element. So we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have known because I've never driven the car where this is all condensated up. So that means the rear element wouldn't have been working. These two wires here, the white and orange and the black, they, I think, yeah, look, they're part of that. So that would have been the reason why our tailgate button doesn't work, even though the button itself is fine. Um, and then you've got another black wire. I don't know if you can see that one there, if it's gonna focus on it or not. There's one here that's basically also started to go. So it's a damn good job that we took that off. What I'm going to do is get some tape to put it around this black wire. And I'm going to cut the ends off where these wires are exposed now. So that's safe overnight. Because I don't want any of this stuff joining and causing the electrical short. <coughs> okay, so back onto the wiring. We've got our replacement harness now. So literally, you've got two connectors which link onto the washer jet pipe so we cut that and then we crimp down that connector onto it it looks like there might be extra wires in here i'm guessing if you have a slightly different loom some of them have already got the uh, cable connectors on there so you just need to use a crimp tool like that and if you see it's got this little section here that crimps over the red bit flapping down um, yeah, I know I missed this when I cleaned the car originally, but we're going to give it another wash today, so we'll sort that out. Let's uh, get this out and get it swapped over.
Okay, let's see if that's fixed it. There we go. On working tailgate. Okay, so now moving on to the leather, we've got this leather recoloring balm, which to me says that that should match quite nicely. I was looking at a more expensive kit because to do this properly, the kit was going to be about 150 pounds. I don't really want to spend 150 pounds to do two seats. So this was a little bit cheaper. I think this is around about 20 or 30 quid. I'll put a link in the description. Um, and what I've also bought some of these, these are uh, makeup sponge applicators. I've used these in the past and they work really well. And what I've done, I actually cut one of them down in half so that when you're going along like an edge like this you can be a lot more accurate so obviously being careful of these bits of stitching here which is different colour um, what I did last night is I did a test spot down here and I put a layer over the top of here now this has still got some dark spots on it I also then did this section here I don't know if you can see the difference so that's the bit I've coated with the leather uh, the leather dye sorry and this is a bit I haven't so I reckon a couple of layers of that coating um, and that will sit on there for probably a couple of hours I've also got the heat gun if I wanted to gently heat up a couple of areas just to dry it a bit quicker but I think we just basically coat the whole of this base let it dry do the bolster on that seat as well to where that little scratch is let it dry, see how it goes, and then we'll put that leather sealant over the top um, just to seal it in and get that matte finish back on it. You see the benefit of that point that you can get right down into that gap and that pack of well there was actually six in there but the kids wanted three of them um to play with so yeah look at that it's working nicely and the nice thing with this is you just keep layering it and if it dries unevenly you can just buff it with a microfiber which like blends it out to where it needs to be get down in those gaps but yeah, you get the idea so you just literally pile it on and let it dry and make sure where it's gone a bit uneven just layer it out like that all right I'll do the whole seat and then we'll cut back all right so that's the base of that seat and the bolster all drying just going to have a go at this scratch here just show you this is just first layer and you see straight away let's get rid of that another bit here look see this one do a bit more of the dye on there but again look just gently rubbing it in I reckon like this bit down here is probably a bit worse but straight off and that's not using a lot straight off is making that seat look better look I reckon a couple of coats of the dye, let it dry properly, wipe it over with the microfiber just to even it out and then uh, we'll bang a, uh, a sealant on there and these will be done. Okay so with some thanks, well I say thanks, George helped clean the car. Um, 
yeah i think it took me four times as long to do with his help but i like to get him involved um and he wants to help genuinely so i've just given it a really good clean on the outside um i think we're pretty much at the stage now where i'm ready to put this up for sale um there are a couple of little bits i would have liked to get done I'd like to have got time to touch in this little scratch and I will still go over this with some polish because that's just basically where they've layered paint too thick um, I still haven't found one of those one of these um, fog light covers looked absolutely everywhere for them the only ones I can find which are semi reasonable are from Italy and that's still about 90 quid so whoever buys this obviously this is not pristine perfect condition this is a used car 2011 so what we're talking 13 years old it's not going to be pristine there's a little bit of an indent there on the bonnet as well um I'd like just recap what we've done we've had all four wheels refurbed um so they've all been done i had four brand new toyos so we've got two toyo tr ones i think they are uh yeah tr ones on the front and on the back so it's a complete matching set uh, what else have we had done? I've put the new DAB aerial in it. We've treated the leather on the inside. Obviously, I will clear all this stuff out. Um, so we've treated all the leather on the inside, giving it a nice deep clean. The leather on that seat now is way, way better than it was. Um, all the leather's been protected with our Gion leather sealant. Um, so yeah, I think I've pretty much gone around. Oh yeah, and obviously we've just done the boot wiring. That's the most important thing. So then when you push this button, the boot opens and shuts. So yeah, so that's all done as well. We've done a few little upgrades. Obviously, we've put the a bath fuel cap on there. But all in all, yeah, I think I'm ready for another project. So I will I'll work out how I'm going to do this. I'm probably going to stick it on Instagram and it'll be a case of I'll come up with a price. I've already had offers of five and a half thousand as it stands. So it's going to have to be five and a half as a bare minimum, I think. But I'll stick it on the uh, on Instagram what I want for it. I'll have a look around. Remember, it's only done forty five thousand miles. Um, it's got MOT until January next year, and it's got full service history up to about two thousand, three thousand miles ago. I've got a brand new BMC air filter in the back so that'll be included with it. I've got the original bath oil. In fact, I'll quickly grab the documentation and we'll cut to that, and I'll go through exactly what we've got for it. Right, so just finishing off this video, um, I've just gone through the numbers. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy where we are. So I've had a look online and the a bath with the SS kit on it and with the Monza exhaust. I found another one same year, but that had 91,000 miles. That's on for £6,495. Now, I went online and checked on the status of the car. Now, when I bought it from Copart, it was advertised as a Category N, which I think they did in error. Because if you look online and it's been three months since I got the car, it shows no category on that car whatsoever. It doesn't show as stolen recovered, doesn't show as Category N. Um, I will do a quick uh, car vertical check in a second just to be 100% sure. But when you go on to Auto Trader, if you put in your car edge, and this is a quick way to find out if your car's got a category on it. So I did it with the um, Corsa, put that reg in straight away, came up with Cat N. I've done this multiple times over the last sort of three months on Auto Trader, put that car edge in, and it comes back as no category, no outstanding finance, um, no category against the car never reported as stolen, never reported as damaged. So I'll do a car uh, vertical in a second on the phone, just to double check. So let's start with um, what's included with the car when I come to sell it. So I have two remote keys. Normally you only get one remote key and I believe like a spare just to get you in the car. Uh, and these are very fashionable with a bath, Key rings. I'm not including those in the price. I chose to buy those myself just because I thought they look cool. Um, yeah, we have MOT on the vehicle until, where are we? The 18th of January, 2025. 
I've had the all four tyres replaced. I've had all the wheels balanced um, and alignment done. That's all good as well. So I've got the sheet for that. So that's there. Um, and yeah, so let's go through the figures. I know like the Salvage Rebuilds uh, channel, um, one of their big things is people like the figures. So let's go through the numbers. So we bought the car for £1,650 with fees from Copart that came to a total of £2,043.60. So again, Copart looking out there with uh, some big commission. Uh, transport to the house was £60 thanks to Josh. Um, the window was £35. The wing mirror was £28. Um, the keys. Now this guy who came to cut the keys I can't thank him enough I, I messaged loads of different people and the, the price was coming out for like one remote key with the lock to be picked and for it to be programmed was around about 350 quid he came out to the house the following day after the car arrived and he basically coded two remote keys he even cut and I'll show you it here a spare blade if anyone needs it in the future and wrote down in the front of the book the actual code for the key, which if you go to a bath, they will not give you because they get stolen. Um, and that was 185 pounds. Uh, then we have tires. Now I wish I had done all four at the same time because when I first bought the first two sets, the rear ones, I believe they were, um, they were on offer at 65 pound a tire. So when I went back, they'd gone back up to like 72, but the total cost for the tires, including the alignment was 250 pounds. Uh, wheel refurb. Now this was um, a lot more than, than I anticipated. And that was due to the fact that I'd been using the car. I'd done about five, 600 miles in it now. And I had to go and do a quick job over in Haverhill. And I hit a monumental pothole. And after that, I got this nasty vibration. So when the car went in for the tires to be fitted, they put it on the balancing machine and you could see there was like a massive vibration on there from where it was buckled. So the wheel repair guy, he had to straighten three of the wheels, um, including the refurb, and that came to 456 pounds. Uh, the wing mirror cover that I bought off a subscriber was 25 pounds. The wiring loom for the tailgate, that was 24 pounds. And there was one pound I put on there as well for electrical tape. So I insulated all the wires before I tucked them back up inside the, the, the bodywork. Um, that was a pound. Um, the seat repair I've put down is four pounds. So that was the tape. And I've just allocated a quid for the, for the actual um, thread. Um, the leather balm, that red leather balm was 22 pounds. So like I said before, it would have been 150 pounds to buy a proper repair kit for that. So I think the compromise of spending 22 quid was really worth it. Um, the actual leather sealant I already had, that was a sample I've been given years ago and that was just sat in the cupboard. So there's no cost to that. The MOT was 40 pounds. Um, air filter and the cap. So that's the set that I bought. So we've got the BMC, a brand new BMC air filter. And we also got the um, a bath fuel cap cover. That was 80 pounds. The DAB antenna, I've returned the original one that I bought, which was wrong, which was, I think, for like a, I don't know, a ham radio or something like that. So I went to Halfers and I got a DAB antenna that was £20. And the cowling that goes underneath the steering column and covers up all of the, the, the barrel and that lot, that was £25. Which brings us to a total of £3,000. £295.60, which I think is pretty good. So I'm not going to be greedy. There are things that still need to be done to that car. So we need to spend, in fact, let's work this out now. So we need to spend, let's say, 80 quid on the um, fog light cover. The dent quote I had for all the dents to be removed was £200. And there was that little bit of marking on the side trim. So let's say that let's allocate 20 quid for a touch up kit. They're not that expensive, but that brings us to a nice rounded 300 pounds. So that car has done 45,000 miles, 2011 full service history. Now on the service history, I should probably point this out. I was going to get that serviced. I spoke to two independent garages and they basically said, well, if it's only just had a service 
3,000 miles ago, what's the point in having it done? Drove it over to one of them. They had a look at everything. The belt is spot on. We know that the, sorry, that's the auxiliary belt. We know that the, um, the cam belt's been done and that was done at 31,000 or 32,000 miles. So only sort of 13,000 miles ago. So they basically said it was financially not worth it. They said, run it for another 5,000 miles and then get it serviced. So let's say we add another 200 pound onto that to allocate for a service. That brings to us 500 pounds in total of work that I've not done to that car. So, as I already said, there are cars going on there. I think it was six and a half thousand pounds for one that's done 90,000 miles. That's twice the mileage. So let's say we knock 5,000, 5,000, 500 pounds off the sale value of that car. And I will list that at 6,000 pounds. That car will become available on Instagram. I will post that this week. Anyone who's interested, please send me a message. I will respond in the order that the messages come in. And if you want that car, the asking price is £6,000 and I won't take a penny less because I think you've seen how good that car is, how clean it is. It even has a full custom car cover. I've got the original tank of Petronas oil, so it's got a nice patina on it. So I haven't got that. It's in the back of the Corsa, I think. So I'll go and grab that out and I'll put that included in there as well. You've got full service history, two remote keys, and I think F21, that's going to be a bargain. So if we just work that out, so if we say £6,000 minus my costs, so £3,295.60, that will give me a pre-tax profit of £2,704, of which we're probably going to need to spend £1,000 on that course of getting the engine replaced. So that'll work out quite nicely for me and I can plumb that money straight into another build. We can get back onto Copart and see what's coming up. For everyone who's uh, watched the videos, can't thank you enough. Please remember to share, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell notification so you know when we drop a new video. And thanks again from me and all the family. We look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you then.